What's going on everyone, Gourmet here. Today we have got a FM22 experiment I am bringing your guys way. I went ahead, got the end game editor, and we're going to be doing some experiments from here on out here on the channel. So you'll be getting experiments, guides, and tactics here on the Y Gourmet channel. Now, first experiment we're doing is giving Sunderland, the rival of Newcastle, the exact same takeover that Newcastle received. So I have gone ahead given them a billion pounds in the balance. They have a billion pounds for transfers and around 250 million for payroll. Now, will the team blow through all that money? We will find out in today's video. We are going to be jumping from here, day one, look over the team, what they have from day one, then go five years on and then 10 years on. And depending on how you guys like this video and how it does, we could then do a part two and do 15 years on and 20 years on and see how long it takes Sunderland to really become a dominant force with all this money that they have received from this takeover. But before we do get into today's video, please feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe as that does help the channel get into the YouTube algorithm. And subscribing to the channel is absolutely free, so you can't go wrong with that. But without further ado, let's see what the Sunderland team is all about in season one. All right, so gonna be going from it from a unemployed aspect. So come season 10, I will put myself into the managerial spot and we will then see how everyone is come that point in time. But we'll just get a brief overlook of everyone right now. Now the team isn't valued at a whole heck of a lot. They do have some decent building stones. Um, a lot of younger players that they have on loan here, so they will have to de develop their youngsters big time. Um, some players that will help them in early days are Aiden McGeady. He has played in the Prem and has kind of been on a journey with Sunderland, um, and he has kind of become one of their key focal points, and I believe he is either their captain or uh, vice captain. Uh, but another player is Alex Pritchard. He will be a big time playmaker for them. Uh, for my tactic test, he is a very, very good player. And then Lyndon Gooch, he could become a solid player for them in the early years. But a lot of these players you will probably see either leaving on freeze or being sold on throughout the years. Now, staff wise, I'll go back to the profile. Um, Lee Johnson is the head coach. Um, so will he stick around the entire time? We will find out. But Corey Evans is the captain as of right now. Aiden McGeady is the vice captain. And the key player is also Aiden McGeady with Nile Huggins as the hot prospect. So hopefully with this massive influx into the club, Sunderland can finally get back to winning ways kind of and find their way back into the Premier League sooner rather than later. So now let's fast forward five seasons and see how they are doing. All right, so here we are, five years in the future. No trophies have been added as of yet. Um, no trophies have been added that I can see um, unless they added a Papa John's trophy. I think they did add a Papa John's. Yeah, 2021, they added a Papa John's trophy. But so far, they still have quite a bit of the money left. Still have quite a bit of the money left. Gave them a billion pounds in the balance. They still have 841 million pounds uh, remaining budget. They have 459 million pounds. And in the payroll, 91.02. So they're definitely paying a lot of players a lot of money. Um, but also, looking at the head coach, we got a new head coach. Got a new manager here. Thomas Frank, absolutely love this dude in reality. Absolutely love what he has done with Brentford. Hopefully, Thomas Frank, for Sunderland's sake here, is the man that can take them to the promised land of the Premier League. I think he could definitely do a solid job. Um, I mean, he's done with Brentford in reality. Being that FM is a video game, it's not reality. Hopefully, it can kind of mimic reality in a way and get the uh, Sunderland into the Prem with Thomas Frank. But they are in the Skybet Championship. They do have some fresh faces here. 
All right, so we're going to get into the schedule now. We have gone back to Season 1 and how Sunderland did in Season 1. So they kind of look like they've been going up and down. But you get to December, very, very good month for them. Very good month. Nothing but points coming their way in December. Then comes February, another solid spell. Then you've got March, two games there. A couple games in April that they did pretty hot. And then they slipped up at the end, landed in playoffs and got knocked out by Portsmouth in year one. So nothing in year one going up, but they did win the Papa John's Trophy. They did win that. Um, so that is how to see. Who did they play? Or no, they won it the next year. The next year? I guess it's the next year. I don't know. It said 2021. They won it. But all right, let's get in to season two. Started off kind of shaky. Once again, very shaky season all around. Very, very shaky. You get towards April. They did fairly solid towards the end. They got as many points as they possibly could. They got into the playoffs, made it to the final, and won the final. So within two seasons, they went up to the Skybet Championship. That's very, very solid. Then two seasons, they already went up a league. Very happy to see that. And then I'm guessing year one, yeah, that that is why they made the coaching change. Right, This spell right here between November and December, that is definitely why they made that coaching change. And, I mean, they, they kind of did eh, nothing too special. But then comes season four, and very rocky start once again. Very, very rocky. Then they kind of hit their stride late January through early February, and then kind of up and down the rest of the season. And then comes season five, which now Thomas Frank, we know for sure, is the main man. Kind of up and down again up and down all around nothing too special and then now to current day so going into head coach history they had lee johnson for three years 361 days so basically four years and then elliot dickman was the interim manager for 27 days and they had carlos carvajal for a year and 45 days then richie antoine was the interim manager and now thomas frank has been in charge for 126 days so musical managers but lee johnson did do a pretty solid job he got them a papa john's trophy and he got them promoted as well through the playoffs so i'm sure Sunderland fans would definitely take that within five years being promoted getting a papa john's trophy i know it's not the fa cup or the carabao cup but Definitely a trophy, nonetheless, that they will take. But, I mean, overall, very interesting results so far. Looking at some of the players, we're going to go age-wise. Um, so, Burn Leno is, I guess, their backup goalkeeper. That is interesting. They're paying him $1.78 million, And he's actually their first-choice goalkeeper. Okay, he's 34 Valued between 1.1 and 3.2 million pounds at 34 years old. So, I mean, that's not a bad goalkeeper to have whatsoever. Then you got Adam Davies backing him up at 33. Um, let's see who else. We have got Cameron Brannigan. He is 30 years old now at this stage. And when did they bring him in? Let's see when they brought him in. Transfer-wise, on a free transfer, 2023. Okay. So, very, very interesting there. Flynn Downs, another solid one that they brought in. Brought him in from Swansea. Very solid player right there. Um, Sam Bowen, another solidish one. Michael Karbarnik, I really, really like this kid. I'm not sure I pronounced that right. Apologies if I didn't. But I really, really like this kid. So that is a very, very solid left back, right back player to have. He's valued between 6.2 million pounds and 18.5. So that is nice to see. 
Uh, but I mean, they're they're starting to go youthful, starting to go with some younger players. Still have quite a few older players, but starting to go with the youth. We're gonna look at their transfer history real quick. Go back to year one. So year one, they spent 96k, offloaded 275k total. So made a profit right there. Then year two. They spent five million pounds. They brought in Joel Ward from Crystal Palace, Tom Bradshaw from Millwall. They brought in Adam Davies from Stoke, Wes Burns from Ipswich. I mean, they they brought in some solid players to help them get promoted, and sure enough, they did. They sold a total value of 2.5 million pounds the second year. Then once they went up to the championship. They splashed out 25.5 million pounds. So very interesting to see where all this went. They got Dylan Levitt on a free. Um, let's see who else they got. Jens Torstra also on a free. That is a very solid signing. He is now a coach. Uh, Lewis Baker for 2.6 million pounds. Cameron Brannigan was brought in on a free. Um, Admiral Muspey. Uh, for 1.3 million pounds. Michael Kabernick from Brighton for 6 million pounds. Scott Frazier for 2.8 million with the, with the potential for it to rise to 3.4. And then some smaller fees in and out of there. Jack Hanna for 625k. Ashley Barnes, 425k. Jason Kerr, 1.8 million. Potential to rise to 2.2. Thomas Sang for 6.5 in a player exchange. And they only made 550k that season. Only made 550k the first year that they went up. Then their second year up, they only spent 2 mil, but made 19.25 million. So that's very interesting. It was it was selling Dylan Levitt basically, 12 million, and then potential for that drives to 18.75 with a player exchange. And then players that they brought in, Matthias Jensen, solid one on loan, 275k fee. Daniel Bentley, 525k. Sam Bowen, 130k. Potential to rise to 180. A couple other loans. I mean, they have some very, very solid business they've done, for sure. Um, I mean, in season three shelling out 25.5 million pounds and then making 19.25 back i mean that they're trying to make sure that the books are balanced that that's actually kind of smart on their end uh but then we go to the current season and they splashed out 35 million pounds and only sold a total of 7.5 million pounds now they are really liking using the free transfers. I'm glad that they are doing that. Uh, free transfers help everybody. They brought in Flynn Downs for 19.5 million pounds. So he was a majority of that 35 million that they spent. Then Giuseppe Pazella for 10.5 million potential to rise to 12.5. Very solid left back once again. Um, and then Bern Leno for 1.3 potential to rise to 1.6. And then some loan fees as well uh but i mean they're they're looking pretty solid they're not being absurd really i mean honestly salary wise they're kind of being absurd with what they're paying some people but i mean they're they're going about the business kind of smart and then now it is current day and there's only a few free transfers so far um so i mean we will now go forward five more years and see where Sunderland sit after a decade of having a massive financial takeover. All right, so here we are at the end of a decade after the financial takeover with Sunderland and they have spent quite a bit of money. Last time we checked this was in year five and they were at about 800 something million still left in the balance. It is now down the 380 million pounds and then for their budget remaining budget they've got 15.56 million but the season budget was only 32.12 then the payroll budget 
is at 217 million pounds. So they're definitely, definitely shelling out the cash. Kinda crazy, but from what we can see up here above me, they're in the Premier League. So also from the graph, they have been in the Premier League twice. The first time they went up, they finished in last, but good to see that they went right back up and then they finished in sixth. So that's absolutely phenomenal. Um, their head coach, like I said, I was putting myself in uh, to their managerial position so we can look at the team more in depth. Their coach was Paolo Francesca, or Fa Paolo Fonseca, my bad. Paolo Fonseca, my bad. Um, but I mean, they're doing pretty, pretty solid. Estimated value of the club now is half a billion, so that's awesome. Um, but yeah. Very happy with the way that things are going with Sunderland. They're going about it pretty, pretty well. Um, getting into the squad, we'll go over the squad first now since we have access to it. Um, we'll sort by age first, though, and then look at ability. So players that we would know, Joachim Anderson, very, very solid center back. Um, he joined a couple years ago, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, from 28 to 2032 so he's a big big impact in how they have gone about things Getson Fernandez that is a good signing to see although they got him once he was 30 basically still a solid signing um, very versatile player Flynn Downs still here you got Michael Cabranek who is still here Brandon Williams was brought in Gabriel Martinelli that's awesome uh, Giuseppe Desario was brought in as well. Um, and then I know that there is a lot of regions now. A lot of regions. Uh, but, I mean, Brandon Williams, big, big time player for them. Can play either side, valued at 37 million pounds to 44 million pounds. Very solid player overall. <clears throat> now, going ability-wise, Tom Gleason looks to be stupid good very very good his physicals are absurd mentals very very solid as well technically could probably improve but he is a very solid player very very solid player good playmaker definitely a big big impact player for them then you got Aaron Actis from Argentina he is a very quick player with 17 acceleration 17 agility I mean they're they're looking good He's a star player. They're paying him 18.39 million pounds a year. And he is valued at 82 million pounds to 90 million pounds. I mean, that they're really doing solid with the youngsters. I mean, they're top, yeah, top five. Top five players are all 25 and under. And then you get to Getson Fernandez. Then you get Christian Oliveira, Jorge Cuenca. I am not going to try and pronounce that. I'm going to butcher it. Um, Desario is there as well. Brandon Williams, Cesar Hernandez, looks to be a very solid player as well, who is a right back, so I'm guessing he'll take over for Brandon Williams at some point. Got a player by the name of Lolo, who is a striker, and looks to be fairly solid as well. Played 15 games, though I can see, and hasn't scored yet, so that's kind of disappointing. Uh, but I mean, this group looks very, very solid. I want to look at their schedule, go back five years and let's see what it took for them to get here. So first year after still kind of mediocre within the sky bet championship, then going to the bottom again. Still not quite there yet. Then three years past five. Still not quite there. Oh, no, wait. What am I talking about? They're in the prem. Read, Gormy. Holy crap. They're in the prem three years after. This is the year that they finished in 20th. And then they went back down. But they went back up through playoffs, beating West Brom in the final. And then they, like this year, finished in sixth. So very, very solid to see that. 
I mean, there aren't any teams that are like absolutely absurd to see up in the Prem yet either. Um, the only other team that has like got promoted to being up in the Prem is Bournemouth down here. That is it. Um, other, uh, actually Fulham as well. So, I mean, Watford's up here. Norwich is up here. So, I mean, they've done fairly, fairly solid. It's taken them a decade to kind of get to where everyone is aspiring them to be. But, I mean, in the end, they have done it in a decade, gotten to the Prem, and finished top six. So, that is European football, I believe. Yeah, they're in the Europa League. So, I mean, I would be very, very happy with that. If I was told 10 years time, we're going to be finishing top six and in the Premier League, that would be absolutely insane. Um, so, I want to look... All right, I want to look at the transfers. So, season before they go up, 8 million pounds was spent. Not on anyone crazy, just players that would help them out. Very, very solid. Didn't really make a whole lot of money, only 425,000 pounds. And then this is the season that they pushed for promotion, and they got it. And with the players that they brought in, 35.5 million pounds worth. I mean, it's really, yeah, it's down to two players again. Yokum Anderson and then Will Hughes. Okay. And Yokum Anderson. Both coming from Crystal Palace as well. Then you got Chris Madden from Hull. And then this is when all the money goes out the window when, when they get promoted <laughs> they got promoted and just said all right shell out all the cash available to us 340 million pounds they spent in 2028 2029 that is insane 45 million pounds on grady diangana vic chambere 21 million pounds 9 million pounds for timo Werner. Odalon Kosunu, 27.5 million pounds. Potential for that to rise to 33 million pounds. Fabio Silva, 49.5 million. Gabriel Martinelli, 6.25 million. Potential to rise to 7.25 million. Gabriel Veron, 17 million in a player exchange. DeSassi, 6.75. You got Philip Runningen Jorgensen, 32 million pounds. Mika Barrett. Please, how do you say it? 19.25 million pounds. Fabio Carvalho, 9.75 million in a player exchange. Zamora, 8 million pounds. Cordova, 9.75 million. Danny Gillies, 2.8 million to uh, a potential to rise to 5 million. Then Ismail Casas, 12.5 million. And Louis Perez, 64 million pounds who is now on Man City. Okay, wow. That was absolutely absurd, the amount of money that they spent. And what is crazy is they went back down after spending 340 million pounds. So they go down. They then have to sell a bunch of people, make 123 million pounds, they bought Louis Perez for 64 and sold him for 38.5. That hurts big time. You got James Madison for 8.75 million, though, when they went down. Ted Obica for 10.75. Scott Chance, 6.5. Potential rise to 10.5. Brandon Williams, they brought in from Chelsea, 34.5 million right there. Aaron Actis on loan, 5 million total fee. Faustino and Joran, 19 million, potential to rise to 23. Gabriel Pina, 35.5, potential to rise to 42.5. Victor Reyes, 26.5. Luther Chen, 23 million, potential to rise to 27.5. So even though they got relegated, they still splashed cash once again. And it helped them get promoted again. Where they then spend 219 million pounds. This, this, this is crazy. 
absolutely crazy. They sold a bunch of players, not for a whole heck of a lot, for 27.5 million pounds, but shelled out 219 million pounds. Made the Luther chin. All right, so that carried over, I guess. Desario then was brought in. Tom Gleason for 40 million pounds from Blackburn. Christian Oliveira, 20. Point five million potential rise to twenty four point five from Lokomotiv Moscow. Aaron Actis sixteen million. Harvey Vale eleven million. Lolo from Rangers fourteen point two five. Ryan Jones twenty six. Avika Todorovic one point two. You can find some pretty solid players from Red Star by the way. Sherwin Houston thirty seven million. Hector for eight hundred k. And then Jorge Cuenca Senka something 14.5 million so wow they were not afraid to start spending towards okay we we have what is starting to become a pretty good side we now need to start pl splashing the cash and the second time around that they did it they got it right first time when they spent 340 million pounds they got it wrong somehow but i mean in the end they are now staying in the Prem, and they got Europa League football. So that is absolutely incredible. And they still have 380 million pounds in the balance. They're going to have to really continue putting on out under Paulo Fonseca to uh, continue the run that they have been on with doing better now after finishing in third going up through playoffs finishing in sixth they're gonna have europa league football so hopefully they could do better if you guys want to see how they do and all the way through year 15 and then through year 20 after two decades after a financial takeover make sure to leave a like comment and subscribe if you guys did happen to enjoy today's video we're going to be doing some more of these experiments here in the near future. So, yeah, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It is free after all. So, with all that being said, I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.